Hi everyone. Today we're going to look at timers and counters in the XL4 uh, all-in-one controller by Horner. And the first thing we talk about when we talk about timers and counters is a timing chart. And that's really what the secret of using timers and counters is all about. On our website we've done previous threads on using um, timing or timers in the field and we talked about these uh, timing charts themselves. The same thing applies to the counters and using counters um, um, will allow us to understand exactly what's going to happen in the field. So these two links, the secret of using timers and the secret of using counters, are going to be posted on our website later on. So back to the XL4, when we look at it, we um, will actually call up our Seascape software. And up on my screen here, I have a time on a timer. I have two of them actually. And you see the not T1 here will actually trigger uh, timer one. And timer one has a uh, set value of five and it's a one second pulse rate. It will then turn on relay output two. Relay output two then will fire timer two on for five seconds and then it will energize T1, which is then reset this one. So what I have is a flip-flop scenario. Um, so it'll be on for five seconds, then off for five seconds, on for five seconds, off for five seconds. So that's how that uh, sequence of these two timers worked. In order to program it, if I actually call it up by uh, double-clicking it, you can see here, this is actually my timer going to my memory address, in this case here, um, register 1 and register 1 um, uses 16-bit that's what this one is here plus a 16-bit which is used internally you can see my resolution is set for one second however I could change it to any of these other time bases so one millisecond 10 milliseconds 100 milliseconds you can see here I can have an on delay off delay or I can have it retentive so it's really up to me how I want to program this timer in and the set point was set for five and that's an, uh, just a straight integer or I could actually put a register in there to say what the set point is. So the other thing I can do is actually if I click on this I can actually change it to a 32-bit. However, um, in my application here I don't need the 32-bit and keep in mind that it still needs that additional 16-bit in order to operate with it. Let's cancel out of that. So that's actually how the timer works and if I look at the this debug here we can turn on the debug and what it will do is actually show me what the current status is and I'll turn this into the program mode and what you can see here is this is timing up to 5 then it will reset that uh, relay and then it will start timing again 3, 4, 5 turns that output on and keeps the output on for the five seconds. So that's actually the timer. And if we actually look at the timing charts for this, here they are right here. So the on time, well, we'll have a, a set value here of three. So there's my time base. Then we have our input. And our input turns on, it starts timing. As soon as it goes off, it stops. As soon as it turns on again, it starts again until it gets three and it turns the output. As soon as the output goes off, the output will go off. Then we have an on delay retentive. Now with the retentive, it actually adds a reset into it. So we have our time base again. We have our input, our reset, and then our output. So here, you can see our input goes on. We can start counting one, two, three. Um, then we turn the input off again. When the input turns off, then it retains that count until I turn it back on again. It hits the set value of 5, it turns the output on. It will not reset until I actually get my reset signal. Then we have an off delay. Now the off delay basically works the same way. What we do is when the input signal turns off, then we start counting. So you can see here, as that signal turns off, we start counting and we start counting one two and then the signal comes back on we, we then reset that counter 
Again, turns back off, hits three, then the actual output then turns off. So the output itself is just the exact opposite. Now, if we look at counters, counters, um, same thing. We have, here's a, um, a timing chart for the counter going up to three. So in this case here, we have an input, it, it pulses up a couple times. It leads on the, on the leading edge. So one, two, three. And what you'll notice is that our that's our input signal. So it only triggers on the leading edge of the input signal. Then we have a reset and we have an output. So what we're doing here is counting pulses itself. So let's go back to our um, Seascape software. And we're monitoring it here. And there's my counter. In this case here, I have a one second counter. We have an F1 key, which is hitting the, re the reset of that counter. And, the, and the, remember, the HMI is built into this unit itself. Then we have our count set value, or present value. First. And then we have our output, which is a relay output, which will trigger on. Now, the best thing to do is actually um, look at an exact sample of this program. Now, in order to see this, we have our first uh, scan screen, which will then call up screen number two, which is our introductory screen, which we can see here on our XL4. So I'll turn off the debug for now, and we'll just look at some of the uh, screens that I have programmed here. There's my first one, which is screen number two. And you can see that on the display screen here. Then we have uh, screen number three which is our timers and I have a trend chart here and our trend chart we have two pens the first one being timer one is the present value and timer two the present value then we have our timer output one so that will actually turn on and off as we get that um, value so if I look at the trend double click it you can actually see that um, we can configure those pens and register one is where timer one's coming from. Pen, first pen number two. Pen number two is register three, which is timer two. Remember, it's offset by the by the extra one that's needed internally for the working of the timer. Then if we look at screen number four, we have the counters. Again, the register th uh, three is a counter present value. And then the uh, counter set value is register four and again we could look at the look at the configuration of the pens and the first one register five and then we have the pen color red and then we have our green for our set value okay we'll just get out of that back out of that and we're back into our actual display so if we actually going to run this program we'll actually look at our our screen here and we'll hit this begin and there we have our timer and you can see we're timing up so we hit the output the output turns on and then it turns back off again so again you can see how this progresses if we look at our counters Our counter, it goes by F1, so we'll hit that, it resets. You see we're going to now count up to our set value of 10. And then as soon as we hit that top line, it turns on. And it will keep counting until it reaches the top. Until we hit reset again. And then hits the, the uh, resets everything, then starts counting again up to 10, which then activates that output. Okay, if this has been helpful to you, please give us a thumbs up and that's always appreciated and it helps other people find this information so they too can learn all about the, um, the automation that we talk about. Also, please subscribe to our channel. You'll see a link after this video. And all of the links and information that we just talked about, 
is on our website at accautomation.ca. And while you're there, if you subscribe to our website, you will see receive two links, one for numbering systems and one for um, data collection. Right? And those two uh, uh, ebooks are yours for free. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.